I'm gonna show you how you can use a large language model at home for free and not even have to connect to the internet. So no more chat GPT, this is 100% free for you at home. So let's get started. So to create our own offline personal AI assistant, we're gonna be using the Falcon 7B Instruct model. But for this example, I'm gonna be using RunPod and be utilizing some of their GPU pods. If you wanna have a play around with this, so there's a referral link in the description. So if you're gonna use this system or use your own home computer, uh, you can follow along once we've set up the pods for your home system. Otherwise, if you're gonna use this system, you can follow along with me now. We're gonna create our first GPU pod here. And I'm just going to select the 1x A4, but I'm going to set it to four GPUs. It's 276 an hour. We won't need that much power, but the more GPU power you have, the faster the model will be. So I'm just going to deploy that. I'm going to use a custom deployment. I'll have 100 gigabytes of data, and I'm also going to open port 5002. This is the port that we're going to be running our API from. So we can set the overrides and then click continue, and then we deploy. So once the deployment's ready, we'll be able to connect to it. I'm just going to connect to it using the web terminal. So we click start web terminal and then we connect to the web terminal. So to start off with, I'm going to create a directory called Falcon 7B. And then what I want to do is CD into that directory. So let's create it and then let's CD into that directory. From here, we need to install a couple of packages. We're going to be installing Torch, Torch Vision and Torch Audio. Once they've installed, we're also going to install the transformers by using pip install transformers. We can tie that to the previous install that we did as well. Next up, we want to check that those have worked. So we can run Python 3 dash C and then inside quotes, import torch, import transformers, semicolon, and then print success. And that will tell us if it's successfully installed those packages in this environment. And then lastly, we want to install Flask. This is what we're going to be creating the API with. So on these systems, we have Vim. I prefer to use Nano. So I'm just going to quickly run an application update and install Nano. So we run apt update and then apt install Nano. And then we've got Nano as an editor rather than Vim. It's a lot easier to use. So let's now create our Python file, which is going to be our API. So to do this, we type nano main.py. This will open nano for us. I'm going to start creating the API and importing the Falcon 7B instruct model. So we say from flask, import flask, request, and JSONify. Then we want to import the transformers. So we say from transformers, import auto tokenizer. I'm just going to paste these in, auto tokenizer and auto model for casual LM. Then we want to import the transformers and lastly import torch. So now we've done that, we can initialize our Flask app. So we say app equals Flask and then we open up parentheses, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. And now we need to load the model. So let's put load the model. And to do this, we're going to say the model name that's going to be equal to 2a, I think I pronounced that right, slash falcon 7b instruct. Next up, we need to define our tokenizer. The tokenizer is going to be equal to auto tokenizer dot from pre trained, and then we pass that model in. And after this, we need to create our pipeline. So the pipeline is going to be equal to the transformers dot pipeline. I'm going to open up the brackets and we're going to take in a few arguments. We're going to have text generation. The model is going to be equal to the model name the tokenizer equal to the tokenizer, the torch underscore D type will be equal to torch and it's gonna be a 16 bit float. And then we're gonna trust the remote code to be true and the device map is going to be auto. This should pick up GPUs and CPUs then. So from here, this will actually import the Falcon 7B instruct model. So now we can start creating our endpoint. So to do this, we say at app dot root and that's going to be equal to slash generate. I'm going to have a method on there of post. And now we can start defining the actual generation of the text from that post request. So let's define a generation endpoint. So define generate underscore text. That's going to be a function. And that's going to have an if the request dot method is equal to post. Then what we want to do is say the data is equal to request.json and we're going to pass a prompt through to this. So the prompt 
will be e if I can spell prompt will be equal to the data dot get and we're going to pass in the key of prompt and now we're going to start passing that data through to the pipeline and return a sequence which then we can retrieve the generated text from so I'm going to copy a bit of text here I'm just going to sort this out so yeah, that's a bit better so sequence Sequences will be equal to pipeline, open brackets, it's going to pass in the prompt, the maximum length of 200 for this particular one. You can increase that or decrease that as you wish. Uh, run samples true, top k is going to be equal to 10. Number of return sequences, we only want to return one, you can return as many as you want, but it will take longer to process. And the ERS token ID will be equal to the token that's passed back from the tokenizer. So after that, we want to return a JSONified version of the sequence that is returned. So what we do is we loop through the sequences and we pass back the generated text that's available in there. And then from here, we can say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Then what we want to do is run the application. So we say app dot run. And then we want to have debug turned on. So we say debug equals true. Then we say host will be equal to, and to make sure this works externally, you won't need to do this if you're working locally. You can say 127.0.0.1 or local host, but because this is an external server, we'll need to pass back 0.0.0.0. And then we're gonna pass in the ports number of 5002. If you remember, we whitelisted that port number earlier on. Then what we can do is we can hit Control X, Y and Enter, and that will save the file for us. And now we should be able to run Python 3 main.py to run the file. So I've got a syntax error. That's because I forgot to close the bracket on this if statement. And let's try running that again. Now this process may take a minute to do initially, but I'm just gonna fast forward through this process for you. So I got a small error here on line 23 of the main.py. Let's have a look at what that issue is. Let's remove the brackets around the if statement and change this to generate text. Hit X, Y, resubmit, and run Python main.py again. Now it should have already downloaded most of the model at this point, so it should just load the checkpoint from the shard. I'll fast forward through this part. Once again, my bad on this here, we need methods host. It needs to be methods, not method. We can just save that again and try and run that again. Okay, so we can see that our API is up and running. We're just loading the checkpoints. Brilliant, and we can see that this is now up and running. So what we can do is if we open up Postman, we can create a post request and if you're working locally, you can just enter the 127.0.0.1 slash generate. But as I'm working on the pod, I'll need to take the ID. So you go HTTPS colon slash slash, and then the ID of your box, then dash the port number dot proxy dot run pod dot net forward slash generate. Once you've done this, you can go to the body text and you can enter a prompt. So we need to change this to a JSON type and raw. I'm going to say tell me a rhyme about a cat as we have a dog here from a test I did earlier. So let's hit send and we can see here it's returned the text tell me a rhyme about a cat. A rhyme about a cat is the cat is on the mat. Because it's an instruct model we can ask it to generate other things for us. So can you generate a diet plan for seven days? And here we go we have a diet plan for seven days. So Monday, breakfast, lunch and dinner, Tuesday, and so on and so on. So that's how we can create the personal API at home and not have to rely on ChatGPT. In fact, this model was the model that ChatGPT kind of used for their version three. So in later videos, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna look at how we can train this model more. And we're also gonna look at how we can make this model conversational for any business or personal needs. If you found this video useful, consider hitting that like and that subscribe button. It does help a lot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.